this video, I will discuss inductive bias with respect to ID3 decision tree learning algorithm. In the previous set of videos, I have discussed how to use ID3 decision tree learning algorithm to construct the tree for a given set of uh, training examples. The link for those videos is given in the description below. Follow that particular uh, link so that you can understand how to build or construct decision trees using ID3 algorithm. So in this uh, video, we will concentrate on the inductive bias in ID3 decision tree learning algorithm. Whenever a set of uh, training examples are given to us, we start building the tree using uh, ID3 algorithm. But uh, sometimes what happens is we will come across a single uh, tree. Let us say that we build a tree something like this and then uh, we may get only one tree at this particular point of time. But sometimes what happens is uh, for a given data set, we may get multiple number of trees. This is the one tree we got. Uh, similarly, we may have got something like this one. And then uh, let us say that this is a second one. So we, we got two trees in this particular case or we may get more than two also. Now, the question here is uh, when we have one tree, there will not be any bias in that particular case. We will use this particular tree to classify the new examples. But when you have more than one trees, uh, consistent with the given training examples and if you want to use these particular trees in real world which one i supposed to use should i use this one to classify the new example or should i use this one to classify the new example that is a big question comes in front of us over here so that is what is called as uh, the inductive bias in id3 algorithm over here when you have more than one trees uh, which one to choose that's a question we have to answer over here there are two uh, bias uh, we can use in ID3 algorithm. Uh, the first one is called as approximate inductive bias uh, ID3. Uh, here we prefer the shorter trees over larger trees. For example, if you look at this only, in this case, uh, this particular tree is larger or longer compared to this one. So what we do here is we will consider this particular uh, tree over this one. So that is the first uh, uh, bias what we can have in uh, ID3 algorithm that's called as approximate inductive bias in ID3. The second one is called as a closer approximation uh, of inductive bias uh, with respect to ID3. It's an approximate inductive bias. It's a closer approximation. Again, we do what? We consider the shorter trees. But here, Along with considering the shorter trees, what we do here is uh, let us assume that there are two shorter trees are there of the same size. There is one more tree which is also having the same size in this case. So what I supposed to do? In that case, we need to consider the information gain here. The attributes which are uh, more close towards this particular root with highest uh, information gain, that will be considered. For example, you have two trees. Here, I assume that there is one more tree here of the same uh, size and uh, this particular tree and this particular tree, there are two trees are there, the, the height is same. Uh, we are considering the shorter trees. So out of these three, these two are having the same thing. Now, which one to consider? In such case, we consider uh, a hypothesis, which is having uh, the uh, information gain, maximum information gain towards this particular root. So that will be considered because we are considering that one more constraint, it is called as closer approximation in this case. So these are two kind of bias we can use while selecting a tree so that we can classify the new examples in ID3 algorithm. Now coming back to the next one, why should we prefer the shorter hypothesis? So let us say that we, we assumed or we concluded that we need to consider the shorter trees or the shorter, uh, we can say that uh, learned parameters or a hypothesis. But why should prefer that particular short tree or a short hypothesis? There are some uh, arguments in favor of this one. The first argument is um, there are fewer shorter trees compared to the long ones. So that's the one one. Uh, when you see uh, the in real world, uh, if you go on drawing the decision trees, the number of short trees will be less compared to long trees. So definitely uh, better to go with the shorter trees. And the second one is uh, if a short tree or a short hypothesis fits the given training examples, what is the use of going with a larger uh, tree in this case? For example, look at this particular three trees. This is also fits to the training example. This also fits the training example. This also fits the training example. Let us say that this is of size something like this one. Here we have some more thing and this is having some more like this. And if you look at this particular tree, this tree and this tree, this is also fits to the training example. This one also fits to the training example. Again, this also fits to the training examples. If all of them fits uh, to the training examples, why should I go with this one? I should go with this particular uh, this first one, which is having the smaller size in this case. 
So that is the best uh, criteria in this particular case. Now the next uh, thing comes in front of us is uh, arguments against. What they say is not every short hypothesis is a reasonable one. The meaning is something like this one. Yes, of course, the shorter hypothesis fits to the training example. What, but what is the performance of this particular short hypothesis with respect to, to the testing examples? If it is performing better in the testing examples, it's okay. But it may not perform better in the testing examples. So there we need to consider or there we should not stick to the length. We need to consider the performance of these trees in the training testing examples also. So that is what the argument against this particular shorter hypothesis in this case. But uh, the argument uh, uh, towards or you can say in favor of uh, shorter hypothesis is uh, came uh, again uh, with respect to Occam uh, Razor's uh, conclusion. What he says is simplest ex uh, explanation is usually the best one. The simplest explanation what we get or what we give that will be the best one rather than going with a complex explanation over here. So that is what has been given by the Occam's uh, razor. So because of this particular thing, shorter trees or a shorter hypothesis were considered compared to the longer trees or a longer hypothesis in ID3 learning algorithm. In this video, I have discussed uh, what is uh, inductive bias and uh, what are the different type of inductive bias are used in ID3 algorithm and what are the arguments in favor and what are the arguments against this particular the inductive bias. I hope the concept is clear. If you like the video, do like and share with your friends. Press the subscribe button for more videos. Press the bell icon for regular updates. Thank you for watching.